bringing news from NAB to the people. HDSLR Shooter, brought to you by Akidio, Atomos, Blackmagic Design, ICANN, JVC, SERP, Video Blocks, Carl Zeiss, and Xylite. Hi, Clint with HDSLR Shooter here at NAB Show 2015 at the Blackmagic Design booth, and I'm here with Tina Ekman of Blackmagic, and Tina, major news today, right? Yeah. Major. Talk a little bit about what we're looking at right here. Well, this is actually the Ursa Mini, so we're just starting off with a bang, I guess, on this one. But we do have tons of new products, and this one is definitely getting a ton of attention. Because we started, we obviously had the Ursa last year, the big guy, and we had a lot of great feedback about the nice workflow design, but it's a bigger camera, and a lot of people immediately want to put things on their shoulders. So we started rethinking about that, and we came up with Ursa Mini. So the great thing about this is obviously the size of the camera in general, but also the, the weight of it. So completely without accessories, it's only five and a half pounds. So much different than obviously it's Big Brother over there. But it's a very, very powerful camera because it has the same sensor. So if you start off with the, the basic 4.0 sensor, you know, our basic 4.0 sensor with 60 uh, frames per second with a rolling shutter, 30 frames global shutter with this camera in 12 stops of dynamic range, or you can immediately move up to the 4.6 sensor, which we also just announced that will be available for existing Ursa users to swap that out. Or they can buy this camera in the 4.6 sensor, 15 stops of dynamic range on this sensor. It's gorgeous. As well as, again, the 60 frames rolling or 30 frames global. So you've just got an incredible image with this camera. So once you decide which camera model that you want is appropriate, 4.0, 4.6, the rest of the body is fairly consistent, obviously. So we've done things like, instead of the scopes that are on the side that people might be familiar with, um, we now have a rosette there with a trigger handle, so it's easy to hold and, and move around this way if you, if you choose to do that with the record button. But some of the same power that we're still expecting, the 12 gig out, we have the power supply and, and the, and the um, connections for the EVF as well. Same batteries, uh, so you can switch back and forth batteries if you want to, so the additional um, IDX or Anton Bauer batteries. Smaller flyout screen, of course, because it's a smaller camera. So we're doing five, a five inch screen versus the 10 inch screen. And then we still work with CFast cards. So because we've got those high frame rates coming from RAW, we can actually do dual CFast cards so we can be splitting the content across two cards, just allowing for faster frame rates. Um, USB moved up top, which is great, so you can update those super easy. And then we've actually added a really powerful microphone on this camera because it's not gonna necessarily have as many accessories. We wanted to make sure that the audio is being captured from the microphone on board uh, very cleanly. This particular ca camera is actually outfitted with a couple different accessories. So because again, it's meant to be held um, on the shoulder, we've got an optional shoulder accessory, which is a quick release. So really simple. You've got your um, shoulder mount here, and we've also added a handle with this accessory kit. So you can quick drop it on your shoulder. And then what we're showing on this one is the trigger that comes off the rosette on the side will then go onto the expansion arm. So it's like a, a three piece accessory kit. So you can now have a perfect shoulder you know, balanced camera, it feels awesome. Um, so you can move around with the camera, great. A big difference between this and the big Ursa, just to note, is that this is not a user upgradable camera, right? But the price point for the EF, the, the 4.0 sensor is 299. So it's got a, a starting point there, and then the prices change depending on which sensor you buy. But again, great, you know, prices for this camera. Does the EVF come with it? The EVF is our next accessory that works on both this camera or the Ursa. And this is a, a beautiful EVF. It's a precision glass design, OLED display, 1920 by 1080. It's got um, focus guides on there so you can make sure that your, your eye is completely in focus so that when you're focusing the camera, you can be assured that everything is, is pristine, which is great. It can be set up for left or right eye. You've got a, you can move this out or in, or you can tilt it up or down depending on where your shot is. And it even has a record light on the front. Yeah, so it's it's a really great uh, design and works well with both of our cameras as well. How's that powered? Um, this one, we've got, of course, 12 volt power on the back as well as the battery as well. So same design as the Ursa in that sense. The, the EVF, how is that? I, I apologize. So, that, of course, we've got the cables that come right out. And this is similar to the Ursa where they, they have the spots to plug in here as well and, and the length control also. So when people are thinking about the difference between the Ursa and this one, they should consider 
How likely am I to upgrade this camera in the future? Is, it, is, it, is that going to be the, the big decision? Yeah, I think that would be part of it, but also what size is important. Now, the, the other difference is if they're going to be doing 120 frame rates, Ursa will do 120 frame rates. This one right now is at 60. So although we have a very cool body design here so that we can um, accommodate the faster frame rates, the 60 frames per second, obviously Ursa is going to have an even higher frame rate than Ursa Mini. So that's one consideration. Um, the 4.6 sensor, I mean, I'm sure there's always going to be something next. This is a really high quality, large frame size sensor. So that might be great for many, a number of years still ahead. So, you know, I'm not sure what's coming, that there's always, there's always something. But at the same point, this is an incredible, large image that will deliver anywhere. So I think you're pretty comfortable knowing that if you want something that, of this form factor, it makes sense. You guys just announced that there's a sensor upgrade for it. Yes, yeah. So it's the same 4.6 that we're offering in the Ursa Mini. If you are an existing Ursa user and you have obviously the 4.0 sensor, you can purchase just the Ursa Sensor 4.6. So it's a $2,000 for the EF, $2,500 for the PL, and the, it comes with a thermal pad and instructions so that you can basically take your old sensor off and put your new um, mount on the front of the Ursa camera. So this is user upgradable then? It, the, not this one, but yes, the Ursa, ma Ursa camera is user upgradable and you don't have to send it into the factory, you order the part and you can do it yourself. Excellent, and the Mini is gonna be when? Um, July, so we're working on, the first thing that will probably come out actually are the upgradable sensors for the big Ursa, and then Ursa Mini will start shipping in July is our date right now. Excellent. People want to find out more. What do they do? Well, actually, there's a huge website that just got updated on our web page, or all the web pages, rather, www.blackmagicdesign.com. Thanks, Tina. Thank you. HDSLR Shooter, brought to you by Akidio, Atomos, Blackmagic Design, ICANN, JVC, SERP, Video Blocks, Carl Zeiss, and Xylite.